Welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be doing a BBL Q&A video. I have been getting tons of questions on my Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, you name it. So today I'm going to be answering the most asked questions that I, be, that I have been getting. Also, this is kind of like an update, BBL update. It has been three months and a half since I had my surgery. So I thought I'd update you guys with how I look like and how it's been. Um, so yeah, stick around. Now, before we get started, I just want to say to remember to like this video, share this video, and subscribe to my channel. We are trying to get to a thousand subscribers, so uh, hope it grow out, you know? Um, aside from that, let's get straight into the video. Um, some of the questions I will be repeating um, from my first video, just because they're so commonly asked, that I was just like, whatever, like, I'm just going to throw them in. So the first one is, who's your surgeon and would you recommend him? So my surgeon is Dr. Jaime Campos. Dr. Campos is his name. Um, I will be tagging him below. And I would 100%, 100% recommend him because I seriously love my results. Like, I, I couldn't see myself going to, like, any other doctor just because I love my body that much. Um, not only that, like, safety-wise, I always felt secure, like... I'm not gonna lie and say like I wasn't anxious like the day before because fuck yeah like I was pretty anxious but you know that's normal you're undergoing surgery and just to kind of just throw it out there BBL surgery is the most dangerous surgery you could get so it's still gonna be nerve-wracking but he was super safety and I do recommend him however girls do your own research don't go based off me because you know, it's your body at the end of the day and you're kind of putting it, putting it on the line. So just make sure you do your research. Next question. How long until you felt quote unquote normal? <coughs> Sorry guys. Um, I would say honestly, it took me about like two months and a half for me to feel like completely normal. I feel like I could have gone back to work like after like the third week, I would have been fine to go back to work. Like if you work like in an office setting, um, but yeah, for me it was a little bit different because like how I mentioned in my last video, I did get into a really bad accident, like car accident, literally a week after my surgery. So I wasn't hospitalized and all this stuff. So obviously my recovery is going to be very, very different from other people. But I think that by the third week or second week, I would have been okay to go back to work um, if I wouldn't have been in that accident. Next question is, what supplies did you use? Now, for this one, you guys, I want you guys to pay close attention because before getting my surgery, I did watch a bunch of videos, like so many videos. It was kind of crazy, but I just wanted to make sure I took everything. And I watched a lot of videos where they tell you, like, take this and take this and take that. And honestly, like, my dumbass, you know, went and bought everything, and I only used these things. And I wrote them down because I don't want you to be that girl that buys like 30 different things and you only use like five. Um, so I wrote them down and you're gonna need your stage one faha, you're gonna need your foams, your boppy pillow, is that what it's called? I don't know, como se llama la almohada esta, pero es con la que, <coughs> sorry you guys, I'm still sick, but it's con la que dan chichi, like the one with the C, boppy pillow, whatever it's called, and then uh, compression socks, medications and arnica tea that's it you guys honestly like that's it you don't have to do anything more my faha um that was given to me by my doctor but i did find it on amazon so i'll link it down below that faha you guys was like my freaking ride or die <laughs> like i couldn't have like survived like recovery without that faha because it's not like your typical faha it's not like those thick ones it's really thin however it's still like like cinches you in and then because you also have the foams under and the foams i'm gonna tell you right now the foams i try not wearing the foams because like all the compression shit gets annoying after a while but without the foams i would get creases like my body was shaping in like a really weird way because remember like your body like your skin is like play-doh so como tú te lo hagas, like however you make your body i feel like it's gonna stay like that like if it's kind of like um like you wear a thong every day or you and you get the you get the crease from the thong or when you wear a bra you start getting like back fat because you wear your bra there every single day so just kind of look at it that way you don't want any faha burns so definitely wear your foams and i'll link them down below i'm gonna link everything down below 
Um, so yeah, the foams, and then I also said like the compression socks. You want to get, you want to use use your compression socks because with all the compression socks, you could get a blood clot, and you don't want that. You don't want any blood clots. Um, the arnica tea, that's something I would take literally like every day. Um, at the recovery house where I was staying, they did provide arnica tea, but um, even when I went home. I will still take arnica tea like a lot because it really does help with the swelling and then not only that like it makes you feel good so that's everything I used you guys like it's like five things so everything else that I bought I literally it's like in my drawer and I've never opened it and I feel so bad because they're just extra things that I have like all these other boards I bought all these like useless stuff that you're not gonna use you know so uh, yeah take note of that oh also almost forgot my stage two faha i bought it off amazon but you don't have to worry about your stage two faha until like three weeks later or two and a half weeks later i would say next question um did your doctor use a drain yes so my doctor did use a drain and it's like the drain is gonna be like your best friend like honestly like without the drain you're gonna be a mess if your doctor is not gonna use drains Girl, run. Unless you want to be, like, all messy, like, it, you want to stain your sheets, you want to be stinking like blood, I don't know. Just please, please, please make sure that when you sit down with whoever you're going to go with, always ask, hey, like, do you guys use drains and stuff? Like, because that's, like, a big, big thing, at least for me. I don't want to be messy. And also, I feel like, I don't know, just, you know, he did use a drain, and it was really helpful. And I had it in for about, like like two weeks I would say yeah I had I had the drain in for about two weeks and then you can take it off after you drain like about this much the whole entire day but I'm gonna tell you right now like for me I was draining like five pumps like the pump sorry the pump for the drain is like this big it's like a little pompita and I would fill those up like maybe like four or five times a day and then obviously like as time progresses like you fill it up less and then eventually you can take it off but yeah girl make sure your doctor uses a drain next question is how much was the entire thing from beginning to end and honestly this question i do get quite a lot girls want to know exactly how much is spent period like in todo y la verdad like i would say like i'm shooting like really close to nine thousand, even 10. so let me break it down seven thousand dollars just in the surgery alone what i got was a bbl so um, and lipo 360 so I got like my belly done my sides done my lower back done and then I also added my arms and they put it in my butt obviously that's what Brazilian butt lift is for so that's what they did at the doctors and that was close to like 7,000 um, now aside from just you know after surgery I had to obviously you know get after care I wasn't gonna be able to take care of myself um, especially because I traveled from Arizona to San Diego and that was like another close to like a thousand dollars because I stayed there for like around a week um, so that's already what eight thousand plus like I just said I traveled from Arizona to San Diego and even though I was staying at Manina's for free thank you shout out to my Nina Rosie for letting me stay at her house um, I still spent money like on food and like so bien gastadora la neta like me encanta gastar y pues fui preparada y me gasté como unos ocho mil nueve mil dólares en my surgery. So definitely go prepared, you guys, because you're gonna spend money. It's a big thing, you know, and you don't want to be cheap. <coughs> Sorry, you don't want to be cheap with it because if you need, you know, I, every um everything was fine with me. But what if you need a blood transfusion? What if you need aftercare? What if you have to stay at your doctor's like extra days because you just never know take money because you just never know next question and again I'm sorry that I'm coughing a lot but I'm really getting over this coronavirus I don't have the coronavirus but I'm actually getting over flu so I'm still coughing a little bit all right so who took care of you uh me mama no es cierto not my mom not any family member I actually wanted to be taken care of by someone professionally um, because obviously I just had surgery, like I don't want to put that type of pressure on my family. So yeah, I actually stayed at Cocoon Recovery. Y ahí te tratan bien bonito, la verdad, mis respetos para Cocoon Recovery porque, you know, they shower with me, like, 
you know the only thing that they didn't do was wipe my ass literally but like they shower with you they feed you like and then they have like a little button oh, I just thought it was so crazy but it was like a button like you pressed it and it would go ding dong ding dong and you will have someone in there like right away and they would help you and it's like a really like family like oriented uh, recovery house like they're really close there and they really make you feel like you're at home and I'm gonna be linking them down below I believe like their prices start at like 150 something but I'll link them down below that we guys can you know call them whatever next question is what wish pics do you show your doctor now in my last video I did say that I did pretty much show my doctor what I wanted to look like and I feel like he did accomplish that um, and I said I was gonna insert the pictures but I didn't <laughs> So um, I'm gonna answer them in this video because a lot of girls were asking me like, so what pictures did you show him? Como que se quedaron con la duda y pues las voy a insertar aquí. Pero básicamente, it was just kind of like an idea of what I wanted to look like. Um, I know I don't look exactly like these girls, but for my body type, I feel like he kind of nailed it. Like, literally nailed it. And I don't feel like disproportionate or anything like that, so I love it. Um, but yeah. Next question is, how was the pain 1 through 10? Um, I would say the pain was like close to like a 9 for me. Um, and I feel like I can take pain, but for me, like the pain of where I had the lipo was like unbearable. I don't know how to explain it. Like it wasn't like, I wasn't like screaming, but I would definitely get to a point where I could no longer take it, especially because I really hate taking meds. It's not my thing because um, I don't really get a good reaction to painkillers. So I was trying to avoid taking the painkillers, but I would, really, I would start getting to a point where all the places where I had lipo would start to literally hurt. Like I, it was unbearable for me. So I would take the painkillers and the painkillers would make me feel more like shit. I'll start vomiting. Even though I would be numb to the pain in my body, like where I had the light bulb, obviously like my head would start hurting. Um, I would be vomiting. It, it just was like not a good feeling. So I had to stop taking the painkillers and I was dealing with the pain and the pain was like close to like a nine during those times, you know? Um, yeah, especially when I wouldn't wear my faja. You're not supposed to take your faja para empezar, pero pues, I couldn't have it on all day. It was hard for me. <laughs> it was really uncomfortable. So I'm trying to take my breaks, y luego pues me dolía. And I would say pain was like a nine. Don't expect this to tickle, you guys. It's not going to tickle. It's not going to be cute. You're going to be recovering. You're going to look a mess. And well, yeah, that was, that was the pain level. Next question is, do you regret getting a BBL? And absolutely not. I do not regret it at all. This is something I did for myself. This was to kind of just, I don't know, I really love clothes, like, I like to dress up, and I love how my clothes look now. Not that I hated the way they looked before, pero pues, me gusta más ahora, y pues, cuando voy al vestidor, me siento más confident, that makes sense. So no, absolutely not, I do not regret it. I will say, though, I will say, I'm not going to sit here and lie to you guys, that during the recovery process, when I was in the recovery house, not just me, but the girls in the recovery house, um, not all of them actually I would I want to say all of them did regret it when we were there like we even like said like we're gonna deactivate Instagram and like all, and unfollow all these surgery pages because we kind of felt like in a way pressured to get the surgery in a way if that makes sense I don't know if it'll make sense you guys but it's just something you go through when you're going through recovery and I'm not gonna sit here and say that social media was not something that influenced me to get the surgery because that's how I found out about the surgery to begin with. But definitely, I feel like way more confident now. Now that like the struggle is over, I'm not mad at social media. I don't feel like I need to get any other surgeries either. So I'm not feeling pressure to do anything else. And yeah, don't regret it. That's the little little story. Question is, is your ass hard? Um, no, it's not hard at all. I mean, in the beginning it was. Even in the beginning, I never felt like it was like brick hard. You know what I mean? I always like pictured my ass would be like brick hard right after surgery. But even after surgery, it didn't feel like brick hard. And then now, it just feels like my old booty. Like it just feels like booty. I don't know. It's like feels normal. 
question is how does it feel to be bootylicious now somebody on in my instagram asked me this and i literally started cracking up because i feel absolutely the same i really don't feel any different i still say the same things i still have the same freaking problems that i had before you know i'm still crying over the same two people i'm just kidding but it's like you know it, my life is still like the same i still feel the same and i'm still me so i'm just a little bit more confident that's it and i like how my clothes look now better but Honestly, like, it, it doesn't change you. I feel like money would be something to change you, but a body? It's just body. I don't know. I don't know, you guys. What do you guys think? Have you guys ever gotten this surgery and did it make you feel different? Aside from just feeling, like, a little bit more confident? Yes or no? Comment below. <laughs> Next question. Um, how long until you can do the nasty? Um... <laughs> I would say, uh, uh, let, me, let me know, hold on. Mm, I'm not going to tell you guys when I did it, but <coughs> I feel like I would have been clear to do it like three weeks later. Um, but again, like I said, my recovery was way different. It's going to be way different than all of you guys because I doubt any of you guys and hopefully knock on wood, you know, knock on wood, none of you guys get into a horrible accident afterwards. But Obviously, no, I was in a hospital bed. I wasn't thinking about having sex. But um, I would say, like, if nothing happens and you're good, three weeks after, uh, or whenever you feel good, honestly, like, that's up to your discretion. I would say three weeks, though, would be, like, a good good thing because during the first two weeks, I still had my drain. I didn't want to be, you know, imagine, like, humping and all that. <laughs> it feels so weird saying it but imagine doing the nasty and then you have your drain and imagine he pulls it and imagine it hurts like we're not doing that we are absolutely not doing that next question is what did he do to lose weight before surgery um in my last video i did mention how i did lose weight before the surgery um i was at 150 right so i was at 150 because i was eating a lot <laughs> I was eating good. I was going through like a little rachita in my life where I wasn't feeling my best self and I was like really binging and eating a lot. So I went up to 150 and that's the heaviest I've ever been. And I went down to 135. How did I lose the weight? Um, by following a meal plan and going to the gym. I mean, literally. Like I can sit here and tell you like, oh, I took a magic pill or I did this and that. But by following a meal plan customized to me, and then also following a workout, I did tackle down those pounds. But for the longest, it was so hard to lose weight because I couldn't stick to it. And right now, I'm not going to lie, I'm not going to the gym. But I have been maintaining my weight. Um, so yeah. And I can make like a whole entire video on how I lost weight. Because my before pictures are so embarrassing, you guys. But that's part of life. You know, you're going to have your highs, you're going to have your lows. So I can make a whole entire video about how I lost from 150 to 135 in like two months so if you guys want that video comment down below and let me know so I can tape that for you guys question is was your man supportive mine is not and I think he is jealous um I feel like what guys gonna be like see me hey, obviously no like no guy's gonna be no one in my life I, I, girl or guy like no one in my life has ever been like yeah dude you should you should go under surgery and get your ass done like no nobody not my mom not my dad nobody you know um it's a for angelica because you know we're about to die <laughs> you know angelica's my friend by the way but yeah she was like go she wasn't like go but we were like super you know bbl queens <laughs> we would always talk about getting a bbl so when i was gonna get it done i feel like she was even a little bit nervous but she was never like no don't get it that makes sense you know Mm. but to answer your question if your man is jealous you gotta kick him to the curve <laughs> you don't want no haters in your life we already have enough haters in the life for our men's to be our haters and if your man's gonna be your biggest hater dump him next question is how many incisions do you have and do you have any loose skin from your light bulb okay so my incisions um right now i'm gonna get up and turn the camera around so i can show you guys what i look like kind of like an updated video um so i have one two three four five 
six. So I have six holes. <laughs> I have six incisions and obviously like one in each arm because I did get my arms done like I said and then two in the front. <coughs> Sorry. Two in the front, um, one in the back, in the middle of my back where they did the lipo there and then one for my drain so that's six. Um, and then I'll show you guys, I'll probably show you guys what they look like. They're super tiny. They don't bother me at all. And yeah, um, when it comes to loose skin, I do have some loose skin. Dr. Campos did, um, recommend that I should get like a tummy tuck, but like once he saw me in person, he still said I should get a tummy tuck. But he was like, well, it's not going to look that bad. But just letting you know, you know, you are going to have some new skin. And I do have some new skin. And I'll probably show you guys right now when I turn the camera around. I'll show you guys, like, what my incisions look like and what my stomach looks looks like. Um, but, yeah, I do have some new skin because, obviously, soy mama. I'm a mother. And when you have kids, your stomach stretches. And it's different que cuando eres una plebe y no tienes hijos. Basi te haces una BBL y quedas como Barbie. I, I, I think I look like a Barbie. I, mean, I still feel like I turned out pretty good, but I do have like, like I could I could feel it. It's not like it doesn't look so so wrong, but definitely there is some loose skin there, you know. So let me go ahead and turn the camera on and show you guys what I look like. Okay, so this is what I look like from the front, and I, like I've said before, I am in love with the shape. It's very, like, hourglass vibes, and it's, like, the right amount of, like, natural and fake. Like, it's, like, right in the middle, like, at least for me, you know, I love, like, how it looks. I don't feel like it looks too, too exagerado, but also, like, it's not super natural, and I didn't want super natural, and I didn't want super exagerado, so it's, like, literally in the middle, um, but my favorite part has to be the shape, like, I was really big on shape and I really feel like I did achieve that with this doctor. So I'm going to go ahead and turn around and show you guys what it looked like from the back. Um, and this is what it looked like from the back. Now, like I said, like it, this is very soft. Like it, it does not feel hard at all. And I actually never feel like it felt hard in any way. Yeah, so that's what it looked like from the back. And then also, I'm going to show you guys what my loose skin looks like. But, yeah, let's let's show you guys. So this is where the loose skin comes. It comes in right here. So you guys see that bumping? Like, I'm, like, looking at the viewfinder, but, like, this. This is what I mean by loose skin. And it honestly, like, does not bother me, like, not one bit at all. Um, it was either that loose skin that I have, which is, like, very minimal, um, or having a tummy tuck. So I was like... No, nah, nah, I don't want to have a tummy tuck because the tummy tuck, like, literally, they cut them like all this and they sew it back together. I feel like that's when you have a lot of loose skin that you want to get that. I mean, it was definitely an option for me because there was going to be some loose skin, but this girl, this doesn't bother me one bit, honestly. Like, it's not something that I'm like panicked about. And then also, this is one of the incisions right here. So, this like purple dot right here. Um, Again, it doesn't bother me if obviously if I'm wearing my underwear and I usually wear it up here, this is like covered. So it's not like it bothers me at all. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much like my results. Three months and a half post-op. This is what I look like now. The pain has completely vanished. I don't feel anything. I don't feel sore. Like everything is like really honestly like back to normal. They say that you don't recover until like it's been six months, but I feel like pretty recovered. Um, but you know, I will keep updating you guys and if you guys want me to do an updated video, I will do that as well. But I feel like, I mean, I've been pretty much answered all your questions. Unless you have any other questions, comment them down below. Alright guys, well thank you so, so much for watching this video. Um, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. We're trying to get to a thousand subscribers. So, help your girl out. <laughs> Literally. And... That's pretty much it. I think that's that's it, right? That's it. All right. Peace. Antes yo te pichaba. Ahora yo picheo. Antes tú me quería. Ahora yo no quiero. Yo perreo sola. Ti 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 ti. Yo perreo sola.